I'm really looking forward to this next panel discussion. Um, I'm joined by um, Anton Vishnikov from Big W and Christy Thomas from Australian Unity. Uh, and they will be joining me today to have a discussion on leveraging DevSecOps to gain competitive advantage through enhanced collaboration and governance. And we'll be talking a lot about collaboration and that culture and the change. So. Anton and Christy, if you guys can give me a, a sound or a hello to let me know that you are, uh, we can hear you and everything's all good. Hi, Christy. Hi, Hi Isaac. Hi, Isaac. Hello, everybody. Perfect. Awesome. So, um, what I might do, guys, um, I might actually get you guys to give a brief introduction to yourselves, um, share with our attendees a little bit about your background um, and a little bit about yourself. So Anton, maybe you'd like to start off. Um, can you give us a bit of an introduction about yourself um, and your role and uh, and some info about who you are? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Anton. My surname is Vishnikov. Uh, it's a little bit long uh, Russian uh, surname, uh, Anton V. <laughs> Um, and uh, I'm a DevOps engineering lead at BigWX, uh, which means I lead the platform team and everything DevOps and basically helping everybody uh, to move application from your local lab, laptop all the way to the cloud, right? Through CI CD pipelines, through some kind of automation, through through cloud automation, monitoring story, all, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm a so ex software engineer. Uh, you can go into the story or world from maybe being a software engineer or infrastructure or networking engineer. And uh, I'm a software engineer in heart. And probably that's one of the, my competitive advantage because I love to automate. And uh, I, I, I'm really compassionate to, to the software engineering teams on the software engineer side of things, uh, maybe compared to other teams or DevOps teams. Um, and and yeah, and my, my current challenge is gluing teams together, right? Culturally wise, engineering culture, gluing application teams as a security team with a platform or infrastructure teams. And the technology wise, uh, as many people on the call on, a, on the presentation already said, coping with um, enormous complexity of modern systems, whether that's a cloud, Azure, AWS, you name it, or Kubernetes and many, many other complex technologies getting that complexity, take that away, and then make that as a consumable product for engineering teams. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And Christy, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Hi, all. Um, um, this is, uh, I'm Christy Thomas. Um, I, I, I came to Australia like 15 years back, and I was a, I started as my uh, IT career as a programmer, then moved into networking and security, also more into infrastructure. Then recently, last five, uh, six to seven years, I was into cloud, then DevOps. So um, I've worked with uh, different uh, organizations like uh, John Holland, Australia Post. Then uh, recently, I worked with, uh, I, I was working with uh, Australian Unity. And uh, just now, I joined another, uh, is a US-based, it's called a Demist Data. And they are US based in New York, and I'm joining their global team as a um, cloud uh, lead, as a, as a technical lead for the cloud solutions, um, basically for the DevOps. And it's a, it's a new journey for me. And uh, um, first time we're working, you know, outside Australia company. And um, yeah, so excited about it. And but I had a good um, good uh, career uh, and also good. Uh, um, um, uh, fun and uh, passion in Australian Unity. Uh, it was mainly data-driven company, um, and um, yeah, I had a, I met a lot of uh, good uh, data developers, data engineers, uh, different agile um, projects. Uh, so uh, proud to be part of it, and also it was very successful. And uh, at this stage, I, I think uh, it's a new journey for me to try, try something different. So yeah, so. And um, yeah, uh, you can find me on uh, LinkedIn. And um, yeah, so so um, yeah, that's all about me. <laughs> hey, so, no, fantastic. Um, that's good. So uh, the question that I wanted to ask both of you today is um, the first question to kick things off. Uh, and 
Anton or Christy, I'll let either of you uh, go first with this one. But how does DevSecOps differ from other methods of collaboration? And what will that mean at all levels of the organization? So maybe, uh, Anton, would you like to kick it off uh, with your response to this question? It's a very, very good question. So the question is how DevSecOps differs from other things. Uh, <clears throat> probably my honest feedback, it does not. Right, it's similar to what we invented with the DevOps. Right, at some point, complexity of the systems was so high that it wasn't good enough to have disconnected teams. Right, whether that's application teams or infrastructure teams, and complexity pushed us to work together. Right, uh, technological complexity, but also complexity of the maybe organization structure or velocity of the products and stuff like that. Just, we used to deploy things like maybe once uh, a month or a quarter, 10 years ago, but nowadays, what is it, like 10 times a day, right? So that complexity pushed us to work together, infrastructure and application teams. Now, where's the security? Oh, security was left a little bit behind, right? But nowadays, the same story happens with the security. We found that we've got applications engineers and infrastructure engineers working together, and we're basically joining security. It's the same, same story. Complexity of the security challenges or, or products or applications pushes us to join security into this already kind of working together landscape. And this is why we've got DevSecOps. But this is my interpretation. Uh, challenges, yeah, same same stuff. The cultural one, getting people together, working together, ways of working, all the kind of stuff. And also the second part is the technology, automating security, security as code, configuration as code, everything as code, right? Same story which happened with DevOps, but at much faster pace and probably at much higher stakes because it's security. Christy? No, no. Well, Christy, uh, do you want to uh, have a go at answering that as well? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, pretty much uh, similar to what um, um, Anton just mentioned. Uh, like now, uh, as William also in his, uh, in his talk mentioned, nowadays, I mean, like, you know, modern world, I mean, like, you know, uh, it is like um, agile, DevOps. It's, uh, uh, most of the companies are moving from the traditional waterfall to DevOps. So in DevOps, actually, it's a, you are delivering a component of the, uh, like, you know, and it's a very dynamic and fast. So you have a dev team or a data team. Data is also part of that. And so dev and data team, you have an ops team. And now uh, when you say DevSecOps, it's you are having the security team also. So suppose if you have delivering a component and that component have a security glitch, it can be a product problem or a platform problem. But everyone have to co collaborate and resolve the problem for security because that's uh, that's something which uh, I can see in uh, uh, in in well, in my career with the DevSecOps because when it comes to security for an agile team, everyone comes in. So the collaboration will go because we don't know where the glitch happened. So it can be a, because if there's a problem with the product alone, if there's a, some logic or anything problem, then dev, only dev team will be looking into it. But if there's a problem only in the platform, then only platform team will be looking. But when it comes to security, we need to uh, collaborate together and uh, uh, according to the business requirements, we need to uh, change the security uh, measures or standards. And um, yeah, that is some something about, I can talk about how m modern uh, agile team works on DevSecOps. And uh, challenges actually, as everyone mentioned already here, uh, there are uh, there are different aspects, uh, like, you know, um, basically, um, um, uh, what tools you are using, what languages you are in. Even when you come to uh, dev uh, development, you have different languages. Or if you are coming to DevOps, like a platform, you have different tools for nowadays. So your DevSec DevSecOps tools also have to integrate with all this. So that is another challenge which we can see. And uh, people get used to that uh, tools. So that's one. Yeah, so those are the things which we consider in DevSecOps. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Great answers. Um, so, Anton, um, how can an organization support the cultural change required to implement DevSecOps? Right. It's 
you, you don't have easy easy questions for us, Isa. <laughs> um, how does the organization support culture change required for DevSecOps or anything in the last group, right? Um, well, from the top level conversation, probably we have two choices. Well, uh, I probably don't give anti advice, but some companies are just not meant to do those things. They're not designed to solve those problems. And unless the company itself reinvents uh, how the company works, basically no initiative, whether it's a cloud transformation or security or anything else, are not going to happen, right? It's just no, no, right? But a second yes, it just it starts from the top. Right, so we've got a buy-in, we've got business awareness, so company understands why security is important. Well, why? Well, no, we've got APO, right? We we are a public listed company, and nowadays our security profile is much more sensitive to comparing to maybe five people startup, right? No one cares about that, right? But once we are on an APO, we're contractually obligated to do those things, right? Okay, great, security awareness starts from the top, maybe regulations, maybe any any other requirements. Uh, but it, as some people said, it could start from the bottom. Well, that's people adopting Kubernetes or people raising the security awareness kind of from team's perspective, right? And then when we have those two pieces work together, the company itself understands why they need security, buys in, allocates budgets and cares, right? Lead by example, right? CTO comes and lead by example, or CEO comes lead by example, right? We've got budgets and time, and we also have engineering teams actually understanding why we need that, looking into this one, maybe having trainings, maybe, maybe, maybe there are multiple, you know, avenues here to explore. And we've got those things together, reconcile, and that's where the amazing journey begins. You know, we everybody understands what needs to be done. We've got time budget, we've got resources, and we just move forward full steam ahead, right? That's going to be probably my answer on this one. Very fantastic. Um, and Christy, what are your thoughts? Um, Anton, uh, yeah, Anton already answered uh, most of the stuff. But um, yes, uh, for organization, there should be a, a elevate from the game from the top to the bottom. Um, see the basic uh, the basic rule we have to follow when we deploy DevSecOps is you should not do a big bang change. Never do a big bang change straight away because we have to understand uh, what. We, we need to be in developers or data engineers' shoes also and understand they have time limits, they have uh, creativity. A lot of constraints are there. So we need to understand that. So never I will uh, uh, ask or advise that we should have a big bang changes. You should always go with the continuous improvement. Like, you know, uh, we need to invest uh, more uh, from the top, as uh, Anton mentioned, from top level, have to understand these are... Uh, these are the things and invest more uh, time or call, like you know money or into how to get this practice uh, like a continuously improving and uh, recently i mean no, re not recently actually in australia unity we had a, a secure code warrior tournament in australia post also we had uh, when i was there and um, so the good thing about tournaments is like you know the double it's a practice so that you can, you give incentives uh, and, but when you conduct tournament uh, there are you should not be it, it should be a beginner level you know div, so different levels should be there so that different engineering team can take over their team and make a tournament or make a so that they they improve their uh, quality of coding you know and also it will come so with incentives compliments you can improve uh, like you know you can um, by complimenting them you can make them uh, change the game you know even myself I, when i i'm in agile team um, of of course i was taking care of the security side of it so i when i go back to my developer i say can you do in this way you know so it's we we need to be nice to them also and say that it is gelling and also once you have done it and in the second time when he's following that security uh, standard pat on his back and say uh, compliment him and say that this is a good job so these type of uh, human interactions uh, have to uh, come in place if you want to improve your uh, uh, security or if you want to uh, um, or, or that's organization support if you have to give for DevSecOps. So yeah, that's what I, I will say incentives, tournaments, gift cards, give to developers and data engineers, you know. <laughs> no, fantastic. Um, that's great. And I couldn't agree more. So 
When it comes to, so Christy, maybe this question's for you as well. What does DevSecOps have to do in um, data and information security, uh, particularly for enterprise data and projects? Okay. Yeah. Through uh, see that is one experience I have. I have. Uh, I got. I understood uh, from when I joined Australia Unity because it's a data driven company. So through usually through DevSecOps, uh, most of them think or the normal practice in agile development is we mainly achieve quality code, which is good. Quality. You get a quality code, and then you get a you develop a secure software application. Okay. But in data uh, world or in analytics, most of the companies are moving into, we are using containers there also. Like, you know, nowadays, even data, like, you know, some application like Airflow, all these are on containers in Kubernetes also. So when you when you do that, like, you know, all the data scientists uh, or data engineers, they use prod, production data. Okay, so when you when they develop production data using the production data, when they do the analysis or analytics, they pull different uh, lots of uh, external packages. Like you know, we call it a software composition analysis (SCA). Okay, SAS is different because SAS is something you are scanning the code, but this is uh, where you are checking the. So you pull insecure packages from public hubs. Uh, you have insecure methods. Or uh, uh, like you know, you have um, um, cryptographic uh, like you know outdated outputs. Uh, or, or, sorry, um, debugging um, um, outputs or outdated cryptographic uh, are a, a concern in that world. I mean, like you know, in, when you do so, there should be uh, um, so the, because of that, your data get leaked because if you have if you don't get uh, into this, uh, into the, if you don't stop that, you know. So DevSecOps plays an important role in um, uh, information security or data security with that regards. And there are different tools and measures to do that. Um, there are different companies uh, use different tools. And uh, even Artifactory, you know, closing internet for, uh, you know, production servers, all those things are measures are there, but we need to, uh, we need to, um, uh, for my experience, uh, you know, data scientists, people, especially they cry that we need our internet, we need to pull this. So we need to find, uh, make them also practice how to get, you know, the packages securely. So something which, uh, yeah, that's what uh, I think uh, in the data world. No, fantastic. Great, great answer. And Anton, what are your thoughts there uh, on that question? The question, which was... Yeah, so, uh, so what, what, what does DevSecOps have to do in that data information security space for you? Um, what role does it play when it comes to data and information? Right. Uh, also a good question. Um, what, what, Chris already pointed like the whole idea around this one, right? But one of the interesting, um, I guess, takeaway from me, from for me personally is a de decentralization, right? When we have a security practice or security goals, it's not uncommon to have security team focusing on one thing or ho holistically across the company, and that becomes quick, a, a quickly a bottleneck, right? When we saying okay. Let's try to implement DevSecOps, right? What does it mean? That means that partly responsibility shifts left a little bit through developer cycle, and we involve more people, more eyes, and more expertise to achieve the same goal. So now we don't have just security team working in isolation and you know doing something, but we involve application engineers, networking engineers, data engineers, and many, many, many. Uh, different mobile engineers, right? So we involve many different types of engineers with a very diversified skill set and expertise, right? So that all together, not only it's a diversification of you know expertise from the security team, but it, it also allows us to make more data driven and more precise and more informed choices, right? For me, it's a really really great takeaway. Right, from what I've seen happening in our organization who started looking at the DevSecOps journey and involving all their teams in the security and the other way around, uh, taking security team 
taken into the journey of like, DevOps or data platform or monitoring platform and you name it, right? Great, awesome. Thank you so much for answering that. Um, I've been asking the other uh, presenters and panelists, Natin and William and Darren today, um, this question, and I wanted to ask you guys this question as well, but what are your tips uh, for some of our attendees here today that are starting out on their DevSecOps journey? Um, what would be your top tips for them uh, just based on your own experiences uh, in starting and beginning their journey? Either one of you can go first. Um, Christy, do you want to go first? Yeah, first thing, yeah, first thing, a uh, couple of things, uh, like, you know, um, um, uh, like, you know, a couple of tips are there, actually. First thing is um, patience. You need patience, all right, uh, to understand, I mean, like, what the business requirement is or why, why we talk about DevSecOps or why we talk about security to DevOps. Uh, so I understand, like, you know, transforming from traditional uh, practices to a dynamic uh, or dynamic or fast agile DevOps practice, it's, it's, a, it's a big change. On top of that, you're making um, security also. So and security also have to travel fast with the DevOps. So first thing is patience and, uh, um, like, you know, understand what is a, uh, like, you know, what's the importance. So um, and... Uh, Next thing is like, if you if you have a requirement, I mean, like you know, to uh, get the correct tool so that uh, it works with everyone, you know. So uh, you like um, like if you are or you if you are used to a particular uh, practice, make sure uh, like you know, it, the security also or uh, DevSecOps gel with that practice, you know, to do whatever DevOps practice you have. It, whether try to gel it and get it to the business saying that this is my requirement and the, if security have to, so this is a way I have to practice, start doing. So you need to have patience, understand it and work with uh, the platform team and security team and uh, collaborate and get the, uh, you know, um, the uh, correct tools and, and also we need to understand there are two aspects in DevSecOps. Uh, like one is called, uh, you know, we call it uh, security hotspots, and second one is called uh, vulnerability management. So, we, security hotspots is like, like you know, we solve it through code reviews. So, try to do more code review uh, for your colleague and uh, your team, and uh, you know, make sure that there's uh, try to do that practice. Vulnerability management, then that is a bit more serious. Where before the release, you need to make sure that it's fixed, and you need to uh, uh, make sure these two are, are the main cons aspects which you have to cover. So when you start your journey in DevSecOps, focus on these things. Like, you know, what are the, how, how can you weight things and uh, uh, understand and slowly can improve it. So some there will be false alarm or, or in 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 every security. Um, uh, monitoring system so you need to un have the patience to understand that if there's a false alarm, no problem if it is a critical issue we need to make sure that we fix it so we just make it as a practice and get involved in uh, um, like a, as i mentioned before like a tournaments or uh, even events like this webinars try to learn from um, like you know people who already been in the game you know so and also if you are try to learn from um, your colleagues also the other teams also get involved if you are joining an agile team if they already have a desk core practice try to learn that so so then you will also get used to it and definitely you and you have to be proud of what you're doing and uh, definitely uh, creating a, always uh, comp always enterprises should be uh, complementing more uh, developers who are doing secure code, quality code than insecure code. So that we need to understand that that privilege or uh, that, uh, um, you know, honor to do that, you know, quality code. So, yeah, that's I, I would say for beginner. I mean, for people who are first moving into DevSecOps, I think that will be a tip, you know, uh, you know, that's Great. A way, nice. it's a all practice, you know. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's all practice. Practice makes perfect. Anton, do you have any top tips, anything you'd like to share, final thoughts for our attendees? No, it's a pretty, pretty good overview. It's a continuous journey, but my advice would be uh, split those things into two buckets. As I said, some companies are just not meant to have that journey because they're not designed to they stuck somewhere in the late uh, 1990s. So look, be realistic. You may not be able to change anything in those companies. Uh, so either accept that or find another company who is ready to have this conversation, who is looking into this one, who is, who, who is after the, the changes and get better. And then once you get this company and you see the opportunity to bring DevSecOps as a journey, bring everybody on a journey, right? Lead by example, get those experiences, so all those tools, get better at those tools, help others to get better, and be just contagious and optimistic. Get the engineering teams in this journey, try to talk to, I don't know, tech leads, head of engineering, be that noise layer, and try to reconcile those two things together, the top one and the engineering team. So that's how it could be done. And as Christy already said, don't get frustrated. It's going to take maybe a year at least. For the first half a year, you're going to be making friends. And maybe for the rest half a year, you're going to get somewhere. And yeah, by the end of the year, you may have results. Until then, don't get frustrated. <laughs> No, fantastic. So I think what I took from that is patience and practice. Um, those would be the tips there for everybody. So Christy and Anton, I really appreciate you guys joining me today um, and joining the event to share your insights um, and your expertise on these topics. Um, it was really, really valuable and I really appreciate having you both here with me.